my name is Peggy Berry. I'm a member of the League of Women Voters of the Greater Dayton area. I am here today with candidates running for the Court of Common Pleas, the Juvenile Division. The candidates are Steve Ebshire and Julie Bruns. We will start our interviews by giving the candidates one minute to tell us about themselves and why they want to serve on the Court of Common Pleas Juvenile Division. And we'll start with Mr. Abshire. Thank you. My name is Stephen Abshire and I'm running for Montgomery County Juvenile Court Judge. During my entire career, I've been involved with juvenile court in one aspect or another. I went to high school. I grew up in Montgomery County. I graduated from Northridge in 1987. After I graduated from high school, I went into the United States military, the Army, which gave me the opportunity to get the GI Bill. After I got out of the military, I went to Wright State and got a bachelor's degree and I got a master's degree. Once I got my master's degree from Wright State University, I went to University of Toledo Law School. Once I graduated from law school, my first job was working for Matt Heck as an assistant prosecuting attorney. One of my first positions was working with the Child Protection Unit, working with caseworkers for Montgomery County Children's Services and dealing with abuse, neglect, and dependent children. I really enjoyed that position, helping families out, helping Montgomery County Children's Services out. That was one of my favorite positions starting off. Um, I was fortunate after that position to become the supervising attorney for Care House. Child Abuse Bureau. Basically, we were responsible in prosecuting criminals that would sexually abuse and physically abuse children. During that time period, I got very good at talking with children because they would have to go to court firsthand and tell their stories what happened to them. After Thank you so much. I'm going to have to move to um, Mrs. Bruns. Hi there, my name is Julie Bruns, um, and I am running for juvenile court judge. I have been an attorney for 26 years. Um, I was an assistant prosecuting attorney for 23 of those years and have been a magistrate in juvenile court for the last three and a half years. I was appointed as a juvenile magistrate by the Anthony Judge, uh, judge Anthony Capizzi. Um, he is retiring at the mm -hmm. end of this year, and I'm running for his open seat. Um, during the course of my career, I have been in juvenile court for 20 years. Um, I prosecuted both adult and juvenile cases. Um, I also have been the member of the multidisciplinary team at um, Care House, our local advocacy center. I also um, was part of a, um, several programs one called Juvenile Detention Alternative Initiative. There was one called Dis Disproportionate Minority Contact Committee. I was also on a Supreme Court Committee which created the current juvenile competency statutes. And I also created a nationally recognized sexting diversion program while I have worked here in juvenile court. Um, I have the experience, um, as I indicated before, I've been working here for 20 years, um, both in civil custody as well as delinquency. And um, I have the experience to be the next juvenile court judge. Thank you very much. I will ask each candidate the same questions. You will have two minutes to speak to each question, and then I will move on to the next candidate and give them two minutes to respond. So Ms. Bruns, what do you think is the best judicial approach to help young offenders make a positive change in their lives? Uh, that actually is uh, pretty much what I have been focusing on with regard to my campaign to be uh, the ju next juvenile court judge. Um, the reality in Montgomery County is that uh, children that commit crimes um, are coming back out into our community. So the important thing for us is to uh, maintain the current programs that we have and create new ones um, that can help us rehabilitate these juveniles so that when they do come back out into the community, that they are productive um, and not reoffending. Some of that extends to their families. Um, obviously, when these children go home, they are influenced by their families, and we need to have some outreach with regard to the families as well. So those are programs. There are some that exist. Um, my hope would be to create even more um, so that we can focus on rehabilitation uh, versus uh, basically locking them up. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Mr. Uh, Abshar. 
Thank Same you. question. What Thank do you think is the best judicial approach to help young offenders make positive changes in their lives? Thank you for the question. I can tell you working as an attorney representing juveniles personally, and also being a guardian ad litem in juvenile court, I got to work with the families firsthand. I'm the one that went into the homes, met with the families, not from behind the desk, but met with the families firsthand. I believe individualized treatment in juvenile court while balancing the protection of citizens in Montgomery County is essential. Every family or every child coming before juvenile court is there for a specific reason. No two families are alike. So first thing we have to find out are what are the real reasons why that juvenile is coming down to juvenile court. There's a variety of different reasons. Lack of education, a single parent in the home, not a caregiver providing care for that child once he or she comes back from school. How do we address those issues at the same time while protecting the community? I would also like to add, I've met with all the different law enforcements in Montgomery County, and I am the only candidate that's been endorsed by all six law enforcement. Thank you very much. Um, I will uh, ask you, Mr. Abshire, this next question for you to respond first. Describe your experience that qualifies you to be a juvenile court judge. Thank you. Firsthand knowledge of dealing with the children that come to juvenile court. I've handled all aspects of delinquency for children, also representing the families that come before the court because their child is not going to school. I've been assigned to represent juveniles that have committed crimes in Montgomery County firsthand, either as their attorney or as the GAL for the family. I think this specialized one-on-one -on -one working with families, working with children, gives me an insight in how to relate to the families and how to relate to the children. And a lot of my experience in meeting with the families, they are not trustful of the court system. They're not trustful of law enforcement. And I think we have to bring everybody to the table to understand that there's a lot of good that can come from juvenile court in the treatment that we have. And I think my experience um, leads me to that when I sit there and talk to families and I talk to children to get a deeper understanding what the issues are, because every family that comes into juvenile court, they're specific in what they're dealing with. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Bruns, same question. Describe your experience that qualifies you to be a juvenile court judge. Thank you. So for approximately 20 years, I have physically been located in the juvenile court. Um, I have worked very closely with all of the judges um, that have presided over the cases here. I, as an assistant prosecutor, I um, prosecuted delinquency cases. Um, I fought hard for victims. Um, I also fought hard for rehabilitation of juveniles. Um, I am currently um, a civil magistrate in juvenile court. Um, and so I kind of switched roles from being a prosecutor um, to being a magistrate making decisions with regard to civil custody cases. Those cases are um, cases of parents who are not married, but who have had children. I address custody. I address child support. I address um, uh, parenting time. And so I have expanded my experience um, and covered um, and know a lot about all of the areas of juvenile court. I have been involved in those committees, as I explained uh, previously. Um, those committees have focused on rehabilitating or creating alternatives to juveniles um, and also um, educating them with regard to um, ways to be rehabilitated and for them to engage in rehabilitation themselves. So I have worked closely with the staff here, not only the detention staff, but the judges, um, the probation officers, and um, pretty much everybody who worked here in the court. And so I am familiar with it. And um, I have the experience um, to be the next juvenile court judge. Thank you. Um, Ms. Bruns, next question. Among judges, who would you identify as a mentor or a role model and why? Please choose somebody. Okay, so um, I, I, actually I would, um, I would say Judge Anthony Capizzi, 
who is um, a current juvenile court judge, um, has been one of my mentors for a number of years. Um, obviously, working and being located in juvenile court, I have worked with him personally for a long period of time. Um, I have watched him preside over cases. Um, we have had multiple discussions on cases um, in his chambers, including the um, obviously including the defense attorney on that. Um, I have seen what he has done uh, to the court. I have also seen the programs that he has uh, created as well as supported. Uh, he really is an inspiration to our county and what he has contributed to juvenile court. And um, I have learned a lot from him um, in the period of time where I not only prosecuted cases, but currently as a civil magistrate as well. Thank you. Mr. Abshire, same question. Among judges, who would you identify as a mentor or role model and why? Fortunately, for the past 12 years, not only have I been in Montgomery County representing juveniles and their families, I've been in several other counties in the state of Ohio, but it comes back to who I respect the most. It has to be Judge Capizzi for a variety of different reasons. When I was a private attorney, he would often appoint me to represent the children before his court. He would often um, let me be the GAL for a lot of the cases before the court. One thing that I really respect Judge Capizzi on is the programs that he was able to expand under his tenure. Individualized treatment for youth and their families. Um, he was a big um, administrator for the drug court where I represented mothers before the court that had drug issues and also the juvenile mental health docket. I can't tell you before Judge Capizzi expanded that docket when I would represent children, it took a lot longer to get to the diagnosis why some of the children would come before juvenile court. And luckily I've been on drug court representing the juveniles. That court is essential for the families of Montgomery County. Ch children can get treatment a lot sooner. Their diagnosis can come a lot sooner. And I believe Judge Capizzi has a lot to do with that drug court in the mental health docket. So my answer is Judge Capizzi. Thank you. In closing, we would like to give each candidate uh, a minute for a closing statement. Mr. Abshar, let's please begin with you. Okay. I believe in being a juvenile court judge isn't about what I've accomplished. It isn't. It's about the families in Montgomery County and the needs for children coming before the court. I've experienced what the needs of the children uh, need and what they want firsthand. I've talked to numerous families over the last 12 years representing the families and have a deep understanding of some of the issues that they deal with from day to day, not having enough food in the house, sending their children to school hungry, not having a good school district, not sending their kids to school. So every family has different issues and I understand those different issues. What affects one family may not affect another. And I've learned that during my last 12 years representing families and juveniles. So it's not about me and what my accomplishments are. It's about my desire to continue helping children and helping their families in the most difficult times that they have coming before the court. And that's why I'm running for Montgomery County Juvenile Court Judge. Thank you. Mrs. Brent. Thank you. I have dedicated uh, 20 years of my career to juvenile court. And I have done that because I think juvenile court is a very important court. In fact, it may be the most important court that we have in our county. I truly believe that because if we do not start with the children in our community and making sure that they have stable environments, stable parents, that they have good education uh, and that they are provided with programs, um, our future will be pretty bleak. So the, my goal is to um, continue what I have been doing over, that last, over the last 20 years and provide programs um, to kids uh, for rehabilitation. Um, the rehabilitation does not just um, focus on them, it focuses on their families. And uh, that's what's important. We need to keep our community safe. The best way for us to keep our community safe is um, to have programs for the juveniles who come through our delinquency division. But it's also extremely important to make sure that um, our children are safe through our abuse, neglect, and dependency division, as well as making sure that parents get time with their children, that children are in um, 
safe homes and that uh, they are taken care of as they should be, which is my role now as a civil magistrate. Thank you both for your participation today and good luck with your campaigns. The League of Women Voters encourages all candidates to run an issues oriented campaign. Our goal is to educate the voting public and strengthen our elective political process. The annual voters guide will be distributed mid-October in the Dayton Daily News, AIM Media, suburban newspapers, La Vanguardia, and local libraries, schools, and businesses. Early voting for the upcoming election begins October 12th at your Board of Elections, or you can request an absentee ballot. However you decide to vote, your opinion matters and helps make our democracy work. Thank you. Mm -hmm.